Okay, so let's now do a second example which is even more subtle. Suppose I ask you to calculate the area of the region bounded by the curve x equals 20 minus y squared and y is equal to x. First thing you want to do is sketch the graph of these functions. So the line y equals to x is an orange here and the blue curve is the x equals 20 minus y squared curved. And this is the region that I'm interested in. Now, okay, you can do it the way we've seen so far and it's going to work, but it's just quite subtle. So what you would probably do is split your interval here into two sub-intervals and then calculate the area of the region on the left separately from the area, the area of the region on the right. Now, uh, this is fine, but it's pretty subtle because if you look, for example, at the region on the right, you see that if I'm trying to get, write a, a typical rectangle here and I want to calculate its height, then both the upper point and the lower point actually point on the same curve. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Now, what you would need to do if you wanted to do it this way is realize that, in fact, if you look at this, and want to understand it as a function y as a function of x, then there's a square here, so you would need to write y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 20 minus x. The plus square root would be this branch here, and the, low, the, the minus square root would be this branch. So the upper point will be given by the plus square root, the lower point by the minus square root, and then you could take the difference to get the height of your rectangles and so on. Now, okay, this is all great, it's going to work, but there's a much easier way of uh, dealing with this case. So let's see how we can do it. So instead of calculating the area by slicing uh, the, the, our area with like vertical rectangles, now we could do that horizontally, right? So I could very well decide to take my typical rectangle to be something like this, and then just sum over all rectangles, horizontal rectangles here, so that I can calculate the true area of this region. This is perfectly well defined. It's just like if I'm looking at the graph from this way and just kind of, you know, rotating everything around. So that's totally fine. So I can do that. So let's uh, be, let, let, let this be my typical rectangle. What I need to do is calculate the area of this rectangle and then sum over all such rectangles from the point here. So this point, by the way, is minus 5 minus 5. The point is 4, 4 here. All right, so how do I do that? Well, from this rectangle here, what is the height of this rectangle? So here the height is the thing that will become very small when we sum over. So this is going to be dy. Now we're in the vertical direction, so it's really in the y coordinate. So that's why I call it dy and not dx. And now the width here is the thing which depends on the function. So this is the x coordinate on the right minus the x on the left. So what is this here? Well, the thing on the right is my function 20 minus y squared. And the thing on the left is a function y equals to x, so this is just y. So in other words, the area of my typical rectangle here will be again width times height, so it will be dy times the width, which was 20 minus y squared minus y. Now there's something very, very important to note here. When I wrote the width, I actually wrote everything in terms of y. That's very important because now we're working with horizontal rectangles, so we're going to sum in the vertical direction, so we'll sum over y. So we have to write everything in terms of y, so we can integrate in the y coordinate because we're going in the vertical direction. So remember when we had vertical rectangles, we were doing everything in terms of x. Now with horizontal rectangles, we do everything in terms of y. All right, so now that we have that, to get the total area, all we have to do is integrate, in other words, sum over all the rectangles here. But again, now we integrate in the y-coordinate. So we start with the y-coordinate of our lower point here, so that's minus 5, to the y-coordinate of the upper point, which is 4, and then we integrate the thing inside. I've got one too many brackets, but that doesn't matter. Okay, and this, well, you could now just go on and do this integral. I will leave that as an exercise, lots of steps, steps here, and you should end up with something like 243 over 2, I think, if I didn't make a mistake. Okay, so the key point here is that uh, whenever you, you have to calculate an area here, there's always two ways you can do it. You can either use vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles. Now, both ways will work, but pretty often there's one way which is much faster than the other. In this case, horizontal rectangles is very much, much 
faster than doing vertical rectangles. By the way, it's a very good exercise now to do it with vertical rectangles and see whether you get the same answer. But clearly this was a much faster way. So it's worth thinking before you're starting calculating. Just think about the best way to do it, and then you do the calculations. So let me just summarize that. So there's two cases. So if I go back to the case we saw in the previous video, we had to calculate this area here. Well, here we could have done it in both ways, but the natural way to do it was to choose uh, vertical rectangles. So this was my this was my typical rectangle. The width of that rectangle was dx, and the height was the difference between y top and y bottom, which in this case, if I take this to be f of x and this to be g of x, would be just the difference between f of x minus g of x. And then the area is given by writing into everything in terms of x and integrating from x equals to a to x equals to b. Now, in the other case that I had here, I did horizontal slicing, so my typical rectangle was something like that. Now, in this case, the width was the difference between the x right coordinate and then the x left, and then the height was given by dy here. Now, I write everything in terms of y here, so this would be my function f of y as a function of y. This would be a function g of y as a function of y, so everything is written in terms of y. And then to calculate the total area, again, I integrate. But now I'm integrating in the y direction from the lower point in y to the upper point in y. 